All right, welcome back to another Coin Shishan Reviews. And we are down here in Kanagawa at the Mary Art Gallery for the Showa Kaiki Manga Syndrome event, featuring some of our favorite horror mangaka ever. Um, so let's take a look inside. Pretty small gallery space, so there's not a lot of art by each mangaka, but some of the art is just fantastic. Here on the left, we have some Wada Mizuna. In Japanese, it says Kya or Gya. Scary. Something like a scary scream to kind of bring us into this gallery space. And there we go with some Karasawa Naoki. That's a cool piece. Kanafuro Taro. These are wild. Love these. They were pretty pricey though, but man, look at all the detail. And those are original pieces, not prints, that we have right here. And this is not a baby coming out of that lady. Ameya Akitaka. And of course, Junji Ito. I tried my best to film everything in here, but some other customers came in while I was there, so I kind of had to film around them. And you know, the gallery owner was awesome. He was very nice, letting me film while I was there. Uh, so check out Mary Art Gallery down there. Motomachi Chukagai Kanagawa. There we have Tomie 2. And here coming up, Soichi, one of my favorite Junji Ito characters ever. Sick. I have to do a Junji Ito video here at some point because my collection has gotten out of control. As my collecting tends to get out of control. That piece is really cool too. So some of those are originals that are not for sale. The top row, these are all limited edition prints, limited to 100 and at this event limited to 20, signed by the man himself. And here we have some original pages from Hino Hideshi. Love Hino. Y'all know that though. Unfortunately, none of these were for sale, but it was really sweet to be able to see his notes and see his artwork you know, in person. Of course, all these placards have a little bit of a background on each of the mangaka. So good. Of course, Bug Boy, Onimbo. Uh, God, just the list goes on and on of awesome Hino Hideshi characters. Body gore, lots of pus and blood and guts and saggy eyeballs. Good stuff. I know y'all waiting for my Hino Hideshi video. It, it'll come someday, but it takes a lot of prep. Here's some Kojima Miyako. Um, she's got a pretty good presence on SNS on Insta, so her two paintings on the upper left there had already sold. The color ones, those are hand painted, and uh, then she has those pen and inks. And she had some prints for sale, very reasonably uh, priced uh, hand signed prints. Um, I already have a print on my wall, so I didn't pick one up while I was there. But wait till the end of the segment, and I will show you what I picked up while I was here at the event. This is Noroi. Michiru, who is being released by Starfruit Books this year. Finally, Noroi gets an English translation, and even it's hard to track down his Tonkobon here, and if you do track him down, sometimes they have him at uh, Mandarake or other shops, they're $35 to $70, depending on the Tonkobon, and they're kind of hard to track down, so it's awesome that Starfruit will be releasing them in English to solve all of our problems. And I love me an Inu Ningen, or a human-faced dog, especially when it's as creepy as this one. And that girl's drunk. Let 
Yeah. I mean, all of these artists could have their own show. In Kago Shintaro, we have the... What do I want to say? The dismantling of Santa. The worrying dismantling of Santa on the left. These are original watercolors, not prints. So they're a bit pricey, but beautiful. And Sakabashira Imiri, who only had this one big piece here because currently he's holding an exhibition at Takoshi at Nakano Broadway, because I go over there often. He's been holding that exhibition for about six weeks, just tons of kaiju uh, paintings over there, all of them priced around $550. Um, I think that piece there was priced at 1500 so I think a lot of his artwork is up over there. There's Murata Ramu. I like this second pen and ink up top here, which is the yokai, a skull of the yokai kappa. The kappa who comes and steals the bung balls out of your bunghole. Not so familiar with Ohashi Hiroyuki, but cute. And here we have One Piece by Takayama Tatari. I'm a big fan. I did a video on him before. That's Fear of the mouth Eye Girl that just went up on the screen. One of my favorite modern horror mangaka because with that kind of retro vibe. Most of his stuff nowadays is released online though. I haven't seen a Tonko Bone of anything new for a while. I couldn't catch who this was. Uh, maybe... Uh, Gentleman Nakamura, and then here we have Send No Knife, over here on the left. Again, I'm trying not to vid other people. And I also missed a couple things while I was here videoing. I missed Yamasaki Toru, that's from the Mary Arts website, and also the Maduro. There's the Maduro stuff. And here is the merch that they had on offer while I was there. Some good stuff, some stuff that I could kind of do without, but eh, it's... Good, I picked up some stuff while I was here, so hang tight and I'll show you in a minute. But, yeah, all in all, it was a pretty rad art exhibition. I mean, where do you get all of these awesome Showa horror mangaka together in one place? Yeah. Alright, well, let's take a look at what I got. Oh yeah, so on the way out across the street from the art gallery is a little tin toy museum. I didn't go in the museum portion in the back there, but they have a toy shop out front, which this is, and they had a couple really cool things in here. So I hopped in here for a second, chatted with the staff member for a little bit. There's some Yoko there. And all kinds, just random toys, wrestling toys, Showa era toys. It's cool running across some random shop like this. Kind of out in the middle of nowhere, it really is. Motomachi Chukagai. Love the Astro Boy kind of spin off painting there. And I got this uh, Nekome Kozo or Cat Eyed Boy toy. Of course, by Umez, and I got this Tadanori Yoko um, box set, sealed still, of cards, of posters that he had done over the years. So that was the stuff that I happened to just run into on my way out of there. And this is the British Cemetery on the way back down towards the station. And of course, when in Yokohama, take a picture of Yokohama Landmark Tower. All right, let's see what I got. Well, let's take a look at what I picked up while I was at the Showa Kikai Manga Syndrome event at Mary Art Gallery down there outside of Yokohama in Kanagawa. Um, first of all, Gentleman Nakamura. I got some postcards just to support the artists. Um, and that is not printed on the back. That is handwritten on the back. I don't know if it's by Gentleman Nakamura himself or not, but I hope so. Um, I had also gotten a Sachiko... Uguisu postcard set. I like this one with the kappa coming to steal the girl from bed. It's a little sticker in there as well. And one more on this side. Pretty cool. Also got a Kojima Miyako card. I have a lot of Kojima Miyako stuff. Almost all of her Tonkobon, a print that's signed, um, a couple other things around. So uh, 
got to support her in every way possible. She was there the day before I went to the event, which I saw on her Instagram, which is a great follow, especially to find out about good art events like this one. And uh, this is Akitaka Ameya. He had these three original paintings there with postcards. I believe they were all sold out, to be honest, though. The detail is amazing. They were pretty expensive original pieces as well. Wild. That is not a baby. And then I have a couple Hino Hideshi can badges already, but these are really cheap. I think they're like 278 yen, so I got a couple of these. They were almost sold out, so these were like some of the last ones they had. Bug Boy. Yeah, those are pretty cool. And because there was no original Hino Hideshi artwork for sale there, I picked up a Hell Baby t-shirt. This is the back. And this is the front. Hell Baby, of course. Awesome tea. A little bit wide for my style, but eh, what can you do? Got to support the artists and I can rock it, I am sure. And then while I was there, ah, I did it and I bought, first of all, I bought an original print signed by Junji Ito. It is Tomie 2, of course, from the Tomie series. Um, the two does not mean necessarily from volume two of the two book omnibus series. I think it just is because he had a Tomie 1 and Tomie 2 there. I wanted to get Soichi, but ah, what am I going to do? Tomie Soichi, Tomie Soichi. So I went with Tomie. Um, it's limited print um, out of 100. There's 20 limited to this event. And then I imagine 20 at a different event, 20 at a different event. Those will take a little bit, that will take a little bit longer for me to get because after the art show wraps up, they send it back to Asahi Publishing who publishes all of and manages all of uh, Junji Ito's stuff. And then they will send it to me. And then I also got this. Kago Shintaro's and here's some Kago Shintaro stuff. I have tons of Kago Shintaro stuff now, but Kago Shintaro's, uh, I guess it would be read Santa Claus Konsu Bunkai, or the troubling dismantling or separation of Santa Claus. You can tell by the picture there. Um, this is Aiko, 16 years old, and this is uh, uh, Ekimai Gyakusatsu, um, the I don't know, revenge killing in front of the station. This is part of a series as well. I have about seven or eight more Kago Tonkobon as well, but I just busted these out. I, the other ones are in boxes somewhere. But I picked up that, that is original artwork, one of one, and I am so stoked to get it after the art show wraps up. They're going to send it to me. So after I get those in my possession, I will show them here on the show. But yeah, that was the Showa Kaiki Manga Syndrome art event stuff that I picked up while I was there. All right, let's move on. Do you like rare, weird, and just wild manga, retro magazines, and art books? Then head on over to my Patreon, Koenji Shan Reviews. This is where I post the craziest stuff from my huge collection that is often just too damn hardcore for traditional SNS. For as little as $1 a month, you get one to two exclusive videos per week, plus a look at other things that I'm working on at the moment. So head on over to Patreon, Koenji Shan Reviews. All right, let's get back to it. All right, next let's take a look at some of my manga recommendations. So as a lot of you know, I've just been buying too much stuff lately to do manga haul videos anymore because they just take too much time. So instead, here's some stuff that I've picked up that I'm stoked on or some stuff that I'm reading right now that I'm really stoked on as well. Um, first of all, I'm reading The Garden by Yokoyama Yuichi. I finally started collecting Yokoyama Yuichi recently. This is New Engineering and this is Travel. I believe Travel is going to be released in fall of this year, translated by Ryan Holmberg. Not 100% sure on that. I just saw a post that he did on Insta on it, but um, if it does come out in English, I strongly recommend it because 
Yokoyama Yuichi's artwork is just amazing. His characters are wild. I love the character design. His use of sound effects is great. Goro, 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 goro. All these weird balls rolling. This kind of fantasy land that these people or these beings are exploring is, or some kind of off limits area, is very surreal. Um, paneling is great. And sometimes he does this thing where he'll like stretch. Well, sometimes it gets really psychedelic and abstract like this. And then sometimes he'll do this thing where he'll stretch the panels across two pages, which is really cool as well. Oh, look at those psychedelic faces. Um, let me see if I can find some. I'm not really far into this yet, but man, it's good so far. Like here, we have panels one, two, three, four. Here as well. One, two, three. Really cool stuff. So I strongly recommend picking up some Yokoyama Yuichi if you have a chance. I haven't gotten into these yet, but after I do, then who knows, maybe I'll do a review on some Yokoyama Yuichi, but there's a lot more stuff out there of his that I hope to pick up here soon as well. Um, also, I picked up some Ero Gekiga stuff. This is Ken Tsukikage. Two of his things. Of course, like some of this more erotic stuff I cannot show the insides of on here. That's where I put all this stuff up on my Patreon. So I'll definitely be doing something on these in my Patreon here in the near future. But keep a lookout over there. I also got this Agata Ui. This is Gibo Hazukashi Taiken, or the embarrassing experience of mother-in-law. Um, mother-in-law's embarrassing experience. Obviously, this is also erotic. It's a little bunko. This was not cheap for a bunko. I usually don't buy bunkos because uh, I want larger format, but um, Agata is really hard to find and track down. And when you run across it, you should get it when you have a chance. This one also I'll be reviewing over on my Patreon page. All right, recently I've been reading some Rikyo. I'm on, this is volume one, but I got the whole set. Uh, I forget, 12? 12 or 13 volumes, I can't see from here. I'm on volume three right now, but damn, Rikyo is badass and fun, man. Really good stuff. What is it, around 83? No, 88, 1988. Very action, my Fist of the North Star-esque action-packed, but set in a prison. Why does he go to prison? He was a flute-playing honor roll student. Why is he in prison? And we do find out, of course, but there is some fun violence in this. Great battles. Great, just blood and mayhem. Like they punched that dude so hard, his guts flew out the other side of his chest. constantly getting tortured and locked up and then out and Whoa. man Riccio is pretty damn fun though lots of killing anyways so there's some Riccio there um this is a rare one this is one not many people know about I think this is Kikuchi Hironori really psychedelic stuff this is Gedatsuman. Um, looks really cartoony, like just gag humor, but it gets really psychedelic and surreal. I'm only about 20 pages in so far. The artwork is amazing. This was recommended to me at Faith Gallery, this awesome art gallery I went to here in Koenji. 
to check out some artwork down there. They're going to be doing a Koike Keiichi event this summer. I guess they did a Baron y Yoshimoto, famous mangaka, you know, always dresses like a cowboy, um, event a couple years back, and they're gonna be doing some more mangaka events just right down the road from my house, so I cannot wait for that. This is a gray, if you didn't know, because it says gray right there. Nikiro, nase. Running from the alien. This is really psychedelic. And see, it looks all cartoony here, but it doesn't stay that way the whole time. We have flashes of more, I don't want to say realism, but more detailed art. Wild. So I've actually, I'm on this page right now. So maybe I'll do a full review on Kikuchi Hironori when I get a chance after I pick up some more stuff, but pretty hard to track down. I happened to get lucky and found this on Merukari, pretty relatively inexpensive, but not a lot of them out there. Um, some more stuff that I finished reading or I'm starting to read. Um, Okoshi Kitaro, Eroguro stuff. I've been reading this. Again, I don't know how much I should be showing. Now, this is the evil dentist. I showed a little bit of this in the past. I just finished this recently. Let's see. The girl who eats the umbilical cord. Giant head busts through the window. But of course, that was a dream. I think I will also do a review of this eventually on my Patreon page because uh, some of it's a bit too hardcore for YouTube, unfortunately. But I just finished this actually this morning. Really fun one. So that was that. And I haven't started reading this. So I read Koike Keiichi's Ultra Heaven series. Uh, Heaven's Door series and I finally picked up G so I'm going to be reading this next and then after I finish this I should have read enough stuff to put a video together of the extremely psychedelic and wild artwork of Koike Keiichi. This is pretty good condition. Not impossible to track down. I actually saw some copies over at Mandarake, but I don't, in Nakano Broadway, but I don't know if they have them listed online yet. The more I go over there, the more I find stuff that's not listed online, but that they have in the shop. So for you overseas that like to order from Mandarake, just know that sometimes they just don't have time to put everything up on their website. Gee. Gate one or gate G1. Really looking forward to reading this. I'm not gonna dig through it too much because I don't want to spoil myself. That would be wild. Just spoiling a perfectly good story. Um, yeah, a couple more quick things. Uh, also a bit dirty, dirty Matsumoto. So this is Fushi Chio, even though it looks like Chio, Fushi Chio. Um, by Dirty Matsumoto, Metal Queen. This is wild stuff. This is wild stuff. Uh, the butterfly that can't be killed, warrior princess, lots of uh, erotic scenes in there, monster hunting. Of course, when fighting monsters, there's gonna be some mm, indiscretions, some wild stuff going down, but dang, this is a wild one. And I found two copies of this, both in very good condition for the same price, so I bought both copies, and that was at my local pop-up book event near my house here in Koenji um, over the weekend. So I'm stoked to have got this. That's on my read list right now. I just finished this uh, Miyanishi Keizo. This is a collection of his artworks from, I believe, mostly the late 70s to early 80s. This is Eroguro stuff. There's a nice article in the back, essay in the back on him. Um, this was released in 82. Gosh, somewhere it did list the 
the year. Very artsy, and I mean, it's Edo Guro, but even the Edo stuff is, the composition is done in a way where it's not blatantly erotic. Well, some of it is actually, but a lot of it is just very abstract and fantastical. Um, but there's some wild stuff in here. I just finished reading this as well. This lady is lamenting the death of her lover. And in a fit of rage, she murders her bird. Yeah, well, I don't know if murder is the right word. She killed it. Yeah, Eroguro stuff. Uh, Miyanishi Keizo. I got one other thing by him as well. So I'm looking forward to digging more into Miyanishi stuff. And maybe just to wrap this up, this portion of our video up. Um, Geijutsu Shincho, January 2014. This is the Tsuge. Yoshiharu issue. I've looked for this online in the past. I found it at my local bookstore, Sankakuyama, for 1,800 yen. A little bit more than I wanted to pay for it for a magazine, but um, not a ton of these floating around out there. So when you see them, you should get them. If you see one, you should get it. Zudon, very famous scene in the back of Numa. The pond. That's the final page. I've been meaning to get into, you know, I have a lot of uh, of both Suge Brothers stuff. Um, a lot that I still need to read, and a lot of reference materials that I need to go through. So I thought that this would be a good one to pick up for a future video as well. And that, my fine friends, is some of the stuff that I picked up over the last couple weeks that I'm really stoked on. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, or if you have any suggestions for other things that I should pick up, then let me know in the comments below. All right, let's move on. All right, finally, since this week on April 29th, we have the Dominatrix Heaven event coming up here at Vanilla Gallery in Ginza, featuring Sorayama Hajime, Rock and Jelly Bean, and Terada Katsuya. I thought that we'd go through this Terada Katsuya book. It's called Katsuya Terada Zenbu. Zenbu means complete. So the complete works of Terada Katsuya. Of course, um, he's put out more stuff since then, so it's not all of his complete works. One weird thing that I picked up recently was this. This is his first comic or manga that he ever put out. It's all about cars. Um, I think this is uh, Dave Shigihara was the writer and then Terada was the, did the, the pictures. And Yoshida, he's the dude in here, the character that they follow around. He must be some car aficionado. You know, it kind of reminds you of like a uh, cartoon magazine which I used to pick up when I was a kid, a long time ago. Um, here, I'll flash some images up here, bam. And uh, yeah, this was a score to pick up. And you can see his art style in these drawings, although they're mostly about cars. You do see some terada in here. To be honest, I gave up on cars years ago been here for 19 years. I hate driving in Japan, so I almost never drive at all unless if I take a trip overseas. But there we go. That is uh, I Can't Help Driving You. It's a really long title. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a funny side note that I found that recently at a, digging at a used bookstore. Let's take a little bit of a peek inside Katsuya Terada Zenbu. 
This is in excellent condition, like new condition. Hit out a cam, this must be stuff, pictures of stuff in his studio. There's some digital drawings in here. There's some sketches in here. There's a little bit of everything. And it's just a beautiful book. Looks like something could be right out of Heavy Metal Magazine. I actually don't know if Terada ever published in heavy metal. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, of course, he's down with Soriyama, who has been published a ton in America and Europe. So I wouldn't be surprised. Pretty cool stuff. Let's skip ahead a little bit. We'll get out of the Middle Ages and into some maybe sci-fi stuff. Mm, some character sketches. There we go. It's a bit more sci-fi. Mm, I really like this book, but I think I'm going to probably resell this down the road. Maybe I'll do a complete detailed flip through it in a future video. Eh, I don't know. This is probably enough. He really shows a range of styles in this though. Those are much more like the style of the car one from before, yeah? Let's skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, man. Very cool style. Like I said, a lot of range in his styles. And yeah, I think he's pretty much known for not really doing a lot of planning when he's just sketching up ideas and doing his layouts. But man, I wish Archipel or, you know, Mom Ben. Did Mom Ben do an episode on him? God, I've seen so many of them, I cannot remember. I don't think so. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Hit me up with the link in the comments below if I'm missing a Terada Katsuya video that I should have watched or that I might have watched after four beers and forgot that I watched. So sick. More horror style here in the back. Sci-fi stuff. I always love when I get a used book that still has the Hagaki, the postcard in it. For an Anketo, like a questionnaire. And in the back here, we have some sketch pages, I believe. Some references from where everything was posted and then a bunch of sketches. The car. That line work looks so much like Mobius. But that's what everyone says. Whenever you see lines like that, everyone's like, ah, oh, Mobius. Just like whenever you see wild color, you're like, oh, Richard Corbin. Just the way it goes, man. Everyone gets compared to everyone in the past. But this is Katsuya Terada Zenbu. If you're interested in it, take a look for it online. I did see some available on eBay in America, but I am not sure what kind of prices you're gonna be paying for that. I'll sell mine in the future, but uh, not yet, people, not yet. And that, my fine friends, brings us to the end 
of the show. Thanks to everyone who supports by hitting that sub button. You, it does a lot for me as far as uh, trying to get this weird manga that I collect out to more people. Sub, like, share, and comment if you have the time. I really appreciate it. And remember, I have the Patreon page where I post all the wild stuff from my huge collection of manga, retro magazines, and art books. And until next time, everyone. Matane.